What is the universe? How was it formed? Why did it come to be? These are questions people have posed throughout history, questions that we are still asking. One remarkable man who considered these questions and then set about trying to answer them was Robert Grossetest. Born in about 1170, he was a scholar who would eventually become Bishop of Lincoln until his death in 1253. Although not a scientist in the modern sense of the word, Grossetest was keen to ask questions about the world and indeed cosmos around him. As a starting point, Grossetest made use of ancient Greek thought, mainly the writings of Aristotle, as well as Arabic and Jewish commentaries on this great philosopher. He tried to develop an explanation of the ancient universe with a reference to a Christian context. Grossetest's universe begins. It does so with the instantaneous expansion of light, lux, from a single point. The light is able to spread itself everywhere in creation, drawing matter along with it to create the body of the cosmos. Lux carries matter until it reaches a point where the matter can be moved no further. This creates the first sphere of the universe, the firmament. Grossetest's universe now begins to take shape. A different sort of light, lumen, emanates from the inside of the firmament, pushing forward the matter within the sphere. When lumen can extend matter no further, the boundary of the second sphere is formed. The process continues with light produced from the inside of each newly created sphere, pushing the remaining matter that is within onwards, until the point where matter will no longer move. This process creates nine spheres. Grossetest does not name them, but in ancient and medieval cosmology, the nine celestial spheres are named for planets and stars. The firmament, the fixed stars, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, the Moon. The nine celestial spheres of the medieval cosmos are perfect, stable, unaffected by change. Below the Moon, the perfect order of this universe begins to break down. Light, lumen, is no longer able to reach a perfect equilibrium with matter. The universe below the moon is subject to change and is unpredictable. The sphere of the Earth is a mixture of the four elements. It consists of four subspheres, fire, air, water and earth. According to Grossetest, water and earth remain mixed together. However, although imperfect and in a different state to those above the sphere, the realm beneath the moon is composed fundamentally of the same material. So, for Grossetest, light is a governing principle throughout the whole medieval cosmos on earth as well as in the spheres above. Light fascinated Grossetest. He saw its activity everywhere. Grossetest has sometimes been thought of as the father of modern science. But we cannot be certain that he did carry out experiments. What we can be sure of is that observation and explanation of the natural world were central to his world view. However, how to reconcile ancient philosophy with the natural world in the Christian medieval context was Grossetest's main task.